So today, in our demonstration, we, want, we have two objectives. First is to show the out-of-the-box e-commerce features, highlighting those features that are unique to SharePoint Commerce Services. And then we're going to show how SharePoint Commerce Services combines content management and e-commerce in a real-world scenario. So what we're going to look at first is the out-of-the-box site templates provided with SharePoint Commerce Services. This should look very similar to most of the e-commerce sites that you've either visited or worked on yourselves. And so we do have these e-commerce features available, such as different departments, the ability to drill down, see products in, a, in that department, as well as, as Jesus had mentioned, one of the powerful features that has been added with the extension of SharePoint is the ability to search directly within the site without using a third-party tool. Now, one of the things that's very nice about this is when we do a search for something like Boots, we're going to see our product results come back as you would expect. However, what SharePoint Commerce Services does really well is that they bring also back content pages. So as you can see, we've got our four search results for products, and then we have 15 search results for site content. If I click on this site content search results, we're going to see a list of all the pages within the site that may or may not be product-based that would contain the search term, which in this case was Boots. We have out-of-the-box built-in paging functionality and all those things you would come to expect from a SharePoint site. And so, as an example, here's one quick way that you can search for a topic, quickly drill down to the product page or to a content page that's related. Now, I should mention that this search results here is, again, this is all, the, all of what we're seeing is out of the box. And so we haven't spent any time or any focus on restyling this site other than adding some more colorful ads instead of the placeholder images. But you could work with a marketing team or designers to make these search results look however you feel appropriate for your site and the look and feel that you're going for. So we want to go back and I want to pick a product, and we're just going to do a real quick run through uh, to show some of the e-commerce features that are built into SharePoint Commerce Services. So we drill down to a product detail page, and really the only thing I want to highlight here is are those features that are unique to SharePoint Commerce Services, and that is the ability to have these custom ratings and have that available out of the box, as well as having reviews. In this case, we only have one, but as you can see, we get a quick preview of what the review is, the date, and so on. And so that's just to kind of show what you can do out of the box with SharePoint Commerce Services. Now let's talk about a real world example where a new product is coming out and a merchandiser wants to highlight that new product and create a featured product page. A couple of examples of this might be companies like GameStop or Best Buy where a new game is being released. GameStop often wants to show that uh, a special, more flashy page that would maybe have videos, reviews, or screenshots, that kind of landing page can easily be created in SharePoint Commerce Services. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the administrative site for, for our, our website here that we've called Outdoor Life. Now, a couple things to note right off the bat is you can see that we now have our ribbon that is going to be all of our capability to edit and maintain our site. Now, also, I've already logged in ahead of time as an administrator. I should note that you can set this up to be uh, account-based through Active Directory or through email log, uh, logins that you could grant to individuals who may or may not be at your office. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a new page that's going to be our featured product page. So using our ribbon, I'm going to create our new page. I'm going to call it Featured Product. And in just a moment here, what we sh we'll see is this new page. Now right off the bat, one of the first things we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pick a different page layout. Out of the box, we have several different page layouts we could choose from. And it's also very possible for you to have multiple templates or layouts, rather, preloaded by your design team or other marketing managers. And so in our case, though, we're just going to select one of the out-of-the-box templates. Now that we've added this template, what we're going to see is we're going to only see one section that we add our web parts to. And so in this case, 
we want to build a featured product page that has a banner that would that would uh, highlight the product that's going to be featured. We want to have some descriptive text of the product, some of that pulling from our product catalog, and then a quick way to add to cart. And so to do so, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add an image. And so I click on the add web part link and then have our ribbon extend down to be able to select different web parts that are already configured. So if I add this image viewer, what we'll see is we'll, we have this image viewer on the page. And what I want to do is I'm going to set up this image by editing the web part. We can put in a link up here. And one of the other things we want to do is we want to go ahead and say that we don't want to see the title for this. And so after hitting OK, we should see our image that we've got set up for this product. The next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to hook into our product catalog and get some of that product data for this specific product that we're going to highlight. To do so, we need to add a way to connect between the SharePoint web page that we're creating and the web parts that we're going to add to it with the product catalog. So we can do that again by adding a web part. In this case, we're going to pick our Microsoft Commerce Server category and pick a product provider web part. To configure this, again, we're going to edit our web part and come down here and say that we want to include include cross-sells, upsells, and variants. And it's important that we include variants because with our product catalog, uh, some of our products have multiple variants. And by variants, the best example I could give would be that in the case where we have t-shirts for sale, we would want to have multiple sizes, small, medium, large, and so on. And so if we did not include that, some of the web parts that we'll be adding would not have the information necessary. And so we want to make sure that we include that. And so right now, we've added the product provider web part. We've wired it up to, say, including variants. However, you'll notice it says no product ID sp supplied in the URL. And that's because when we first started creating this page, we weren't looking at any, any particular product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and modify our URL to contain a link to a product. And, and this will refresh our page. And that message will go away, indicating that we now have a product that we are connecting to through our product catalog. Now the next step is we want to add a product description to our featured product page. Again, we're going to add a new web part, pick our Microsoft Commerce Server category, and select product details. We move our product details web part to the bottom of the page. We want it under our image. And now first thing that you're going to notice is it says this web part must be connected to a product provider web part. What that's saying is that we're now adding this web part to the page, but we need to somehow connect it to our product catalog. And if you recall, that's why we set up this product provider. So when we click our drop down here, we'll see connections, get a product provider from the provider that we added. Now this will wire it up to the provider that we've already said. So now we have this attached to our product. We also notice that it's asking us for some XSL transformation. What that's telling us is that we, we really just want to pick what kind of content do we want to display here. And so with that, when we edit our web part, we'll see templates to display. Now out of the box, there are several templates that can be chosen for this site template and, and that would, would transform the data from the product catalog into a usable form on this web page. Now for this purpose, we've already created a featured product page to illustrate what could be displayed here. Now, we should say that you know, we, we've created this very quickly just to highlight what kind of capabilities are there. However, you could have a design team working with marketing managers to come up with a very elaborate design that would all be pre-configured through these different templates and an individual who's coming in would not need to know HTML, XSL, or any of those kind of technologies that typically are, are necessary to create a new page. They would simply select what has already been done for them. So if I hit OK here, what we should see is we should see the page refresh with our product description information. Now this product description information, most of this information comes from that template that I had selected. However, the, the sections here that I have are in, that are in bold, 
those are again pointing to product category inf or product product information from the product catalog, and those are put in the page depending on the product ID that I've selected. And so if we actually change to a different product ID, what we would see is that you would see the um, the product I, I product specific information would change. So the product name Dunes and the size would change to be related to that specific project or excuse me product. Now the last thing that we want to do for this featured product page is give the user a quick way to be able to add this to their cart. We've presented them with a lot of information and, and hopefully compelled them to buy this product. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to add another commerce server web part, which is the add to cart web part. I'm going to move this to the bottom. And again, we want to wire this up to our connection for our product provider so that way we know exactly which product to add to cart because it's very possible to have a single web page having multiple products displayed based on different types of ads that you want to run or different marketing campaigns. And so as you can see we've really quickly added this add to cart to page um, and at this point we should have all of the features on our page that we want. So to make sure that everything looks good, we can switch over here to our browse. I should save this first. Let me go back. And as you can see, this is what our rendered page will look like. Now at this point, I should note that if we go back to our live site and try to navigate to this URL, we would not be able to see this because we have not published this information to the live site. This is only in the administration site. Since I've saved my work, though, I could leave if I wasn't ready to say that this is ready for publishing and come back another day or at another time and make changes until we feel that this is exactly what we want to present and then we could publish. So at this point, we do want to go ahead and publish, and so I'll click on our ribbon, our publish section of the ribbon, and I want to talk about a couple different keys with this publishing. One of the really nice aspects of SharePoint Commerce Services is the ability to schedule a publish. Now this is very important for a lot of retail chains, especially around um, things like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, where they want content to be live for only a specific period of time so that way it can drive a lot of traffic to their site for that, that moment. And so the scheduling can be done in multiple different ways. You could have it start immediately, but end at a certain time in the future. If you want a promotion to go 30 days from right now, you could set that uh, set that end date right here. Likewise, you could, in the case I had mentioned earlier for Black Friday, you could have the product, or, uh, excuse me, this featured product page go live one minute after midnight and, and end sometime in the evening. However, in this example, that we're going to just go ahead and publish this right now. So, I can click this publish and I wanted to point out that there are two ways of publishing this. One is, like I said, we can schedule it, but the other is publishing it immediately. When it's published immediately though, we, we can say publish immediately because we have all the confidence that this is exactly what we want, or there may be an approval process that may be necessary. SharePoint Commerce Services out of the box has, the, has a workflow process built in. So instead of saying publish, if I say submit here, what's going to happen is it's going to put that product, uh, featured product page in a review state. And at that point, the person who has the ultimate authority to say whether this should go live or not has the ability to approve, or approve that or reject the changes. However, in this case, we do want to go ahead and publish that so we can see, um, see these changes live on our site. All of what we've done here has been without a deployment without any IT involvement other than the initial setup of some templates, and there's been no downtime on the site. Now, if we wanted to do this in a real-world scenario, again, Black Friday, if something came up and you decided to make a change and needed to happen immediately, you wouldn't have to worry about downtime on your highest traffic day of the year. You could make those changes live and, and make them uh, live immediately. 